Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. Um, before we start, I want to let you know that this episode is going to be about how I was sexually abused. Um, if you don't want to hear any of that, if you're going to be triggered by it, please stop the episode right now. Um, I'm going to get kind of graphic, um, and it's going to be uncomfortable. It's already uncomfortable for me. For, for me. Uh, I have this sick feeling in my, in my stomach. Uh, I feel like I'm going to throw up everywhere. Uh, but I want to, I want to, I want to talk about it. It's my, it's my business to talk about it and I'm going to talk about it. I didn't start today's show how I normally do with Cristiano introducing the show because I don't feel that that's appropriate for this episode. Um, so let's get into it. Remember, follow me on Instagram at the Jesus Show and TO, Twitter at Jesus Show and TO, Facebook, the Jesus Show, not that one, TikTok at the Jesus Show, not that one. YouTube type in the Jesus show, not that one or the Jesus show NTO. And if you have questions, comments, concerns about anything about previous episodes and about this episode specifically, please let me know whether you want me to use your name or not use your name. Um, and you can write into the Jesus show NTO at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, let's get into the uncomfortable part. For many years, I was sexually assaulted, sexually abused, right? Is that what we read? I was sexually abused by my cousin, Fernando Blanco. I've held, I've held onto the secret for a long time. And there's two reasons why I'm, I'm talking about it now. One of them is we have a child now. And I don't want that to ever happen to him. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Number two, I was just made aware. Today's Tuesday, the 20th. I was made aware on Monday the 12th that another person who I know was sexually abused by Fernando as well. That sent me over the, that sent me over the top. The reason for that is I didn't start talking about this. I didn't tell my mom and I'm going to go through the, through, through everything. Um, Times that it happened, how my mom reacted, how my sister reacted. Um, I mean, I can only assume my family, because I mean, they're going to hear about it. And I don't give a flying fuck if they don't like what I'm doing. I don't care. I didn't. Here's, here's, here's another thing. When somebody gets mad at someone else for talking about their pain, their traumatic experiences, and the other person gets mad? Why the fuck are you getting mad? Here's, here's a question, and I'm not saying, this is not saying, I'm not saying that, what I am saying is, my mom and my sister Carrie, fuck them, because they've shown me what pieces of shits, pieces of shits they are, how they've reacted to me. And how they reacted to the other person. Um, because my mom and my sister know the other person that um, let us know. Um, when I told... The only, one, the only one who has reacted in a positive manner... In my... You know, when it comes to my mom, my sister, and my brother... Is my brother Greg. My brother has had my back the entire time. My sister and my mom? Nope. And it's weird because they're very religious. My mom is super religious. She always tells me, um, 
you know, you got to pray to God and, you know, he'll, you know, he's there to protect you and blah, blah, all this other bullshit. And my sister says stupid fucking shit like that too. So for two people that believe in God, they have, it's weird, odd, mind boggling that they would react the way they are. They have, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, um, to get back to my point real quick, I'm not saying that the rest of my family, because most of my family doesn't, to be honest with you, the, the rest of our family does not know. The only person that knows what Fernando has done to me is Fernando, me and Fernando. I just recently told my cousin Danny and his wife Janice when we just went out to uh, back home when mommy died. I told them and they didn't know, obviously, because I never told anybody, at least outside of my mom, Carrie and Greg. Robert's parents knew um, when I told my mom because they were there. And I felt like I wanted to tell them too because we grew up with them and I feel like they're my, you know, Moises is, you know, a father figure to me and, and Teresa is a, a mother figure to me. But if any of them get upset, I can understand how, why they would get upset. But to be upset and stay upset at me because I'm talking about it, I mean, I'd kindly tell them to, you know, hey, I don't give a shit. Because I had to, like, especially now, my gra they just buried my grandma today. Greg and I didn't go to the funeral. Because of what my mom said to me. And again, I'll share that with you. Um, where was I going with that? I lost my train of thought. Anyways, yeah, I wasn't, I didn't go. I don't know what I was trying to say. No, no, no. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So that's what's happening today. And right now I'm recording this. Um, and I, I guess I should be over there, but I didn't want to be there. I'm doing this. And I understand if my family gets upset at me for talking about it. I understand if they get upset about how I'm talking about it. But kindly, I don't give a fuck. I was told that this wasn't the time. Well, when the fuck time is this? When, when is there a time to talk about something traumatic that happened to me? By my cousin Fernando. When is it? Because when I told my mom, let's start with that. So I told my mom years ago. I want to say maybe I was 26. I'm 39 now. So I had this secret that Fernando was sexually abusing me for years. If I had to put a number on it, I would say ever since I was eight years old and the last time it happened, I think I was 24, 25. Too long, too long for, too long for it to happen, but it happened. When I talked to my, when I first talked to a therapist up in Susanville, she told me I've never dealt with anybody that was sexually abused for the amount of time that you just told me. Uh, you know, and I told my therapist, I'm not proud of that, but it happened. Um, I remember the, the first thing I can remember, and now remember, Fernando's what, four, five years older than me? Four, four years older than me. So when I was, let's go with four. No, it's five. Five, okay. So when I was eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, he would have been 13. Um, a kid himself, but older than me, and he should have known better. The first time I remember it happening, I was in my grandma and grandpa's bathroom with him. 
for some reason, he said we were going to take a shower together. And, you know, to be honest with you, I don't remember if he said, like, he said, or if our parents were like, ah, oh, just go take a shower together. That I really don't remember. But when we were in there, in the bathroom, we were naked. He told me to look at his penis. And I went, okay. So I looked at it, and he goes, do you like that? And I vaguely remember saying, like, what? Like, I didn't understand, like, do I like what? And he goes, touch it. And I went, nah. He's my cousin. He's my older cousin. I thought he was, thought this was a joke, maybe? I didn't understand what was going on. So he touched my penis. I was like, I remember feeling like, that's weird. That's, it feels, it was weird and it felt wrong. Then he goes, touch mine. I was like, no. He goes, go ahead, touch it. So he grabs my hand. If I remember correctly, he grabs my left arm, my left hand, and puts it on his penis. And he goes, do you like that? Before I can say anything, my Aunt Rosa, his mom, walks in. She goes, what are you doing? And we both, we both jumped. And, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I think he said something like, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. She goes, hurry up and take a shower. I'm not blaming my, my Aunt Rosa for, for this. But I would only assume, and it's easy, and it's always easy to say, if I was that person, if I was in that situation, that's always easy to say, because you don't know how you're going to react in situations. The only thing I look back on that and I would have hoped for is that my aunt saw my penis or my hand on Fernando's penis and went, mm, this is, this is weird. No, you guys are taking a, a shower separately, but it didn't happen. Then it, then the, 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 the sexual, sexual abuse started happening a lot. When I say a lot, I just talked to um, an officer yesterday because I made a report in Montclair. I'm waiting for Austin PD to call me because it happened over there as well. Um, when I was talking to the officer, one of the things he asked me was, how often did this happen? And I go, fuck, man. Once a week? And in talking to him, I said, if I have to put a number on it, I would say once a week the time that I lived at my mom's house. So from eight to, I don't remember when Fernando left to Austin when he moved. But I know from eight years old to 17 before I turned 18. And that window, it happened a fuck ton. It happened at my childhood home. And it happened at his childhood home. There was times where he would pick me up and he'd go, oh, I'm going to pick you. Because as we got older, he had a car and he could drive. And he would, he would tell my mom or one of the adults, I'm going to pick Jess up and we're going to go to Miraloma to my house. And I didn't want to go. It was sometimes that I did want to go. Other times I didn't want to go because I knew what was coming. There was times on the drive. He had this white car. There was times on the drive to his house. He'd pull his penis out. And he goes. He would have me masturbate his penis while he drove. I'm a kid. 
At that time, I could have been 14, 15. He was already 18 and over. He was a legal adult. He knew better. He should have known better. As I started getting older, and I mean, maybe, again, if I have to put a number on it, maybe 12, he started giving me porn. He would give me magazines. He'd give me videos. And he'd tell me, watch these and jack yourself off. Because he was another thing that would happen. He would, the times he would be touching my penis. And I told him many times, I don't want, don't stop. I don't like it. He would get very upset at me because my dick never got hard. Granted, I had a kid dick. Like, kid dicks aren't supposed to get hard. Well, at least they shouldn't be getting hard for things like that. He was always upset at me. What's wrong with you? Why aren't you hard? I don't fucking know, man. I'm a kid. Also, I don't want you to be touching my dick. I've told you that. I started watching porn at a very young age. When I was alone with the porn, yeah, my dick got hard because I'm looking at naked ladies, looking at titties and vagina and their buttholes. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I've never seen this before. When I was watching, because there was times also where he would have me, he would put porn on while he was trying to jerk me off. Or he would have me look at a magazine in hopes that I would get hard. It never happened. As I started getting older, there was times where I told him, like, see, it's not getting hard. Like, we shouldn't be doing this. And he goes, no, 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 it's fine. Most of the time he would tell me, his line to me would, the, 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 the phrase he would tell me when he'd get me alone was, let me see it. So he would say. We'd be, he'd, he'd, you know, corral me into my bedroom, close the door, and he'd go, let me see it. I don't want to, I'd tell him. Come on. I don't want to. It'll be quick. That's what he would tell me. So as I start reluctantly taking down my pants or shorts or whatever I had, he'd start pulling them down for me as well. And then he'd grab my hand and put my hand on his penis. And he would put his hand on my penis. And he'd tell, him, tell me to jerk him off. I was scared. He told me I could never tell anybody because then he would get in trouble. You don't want to tell anybody because then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in trouble. Do you know what gel is? He would tell me this all the time. Do you know what gel is? And as I got older, I started having a better understanding of what jail was. Yeah? You know, bad things happen to people in jail, right? And I mean, as a kid, I was like, yeah, you go to jail and you're going to get murdered. Like, all the, all the bad people are in there. You know, like, you know, Lord Vol Voldemort is in there. Um, the Hamburglar. Fucking Darth Vader, you know? Like, in my kid head, I'm like, yeah, that's where all the bad people are. And he'd tell me, you don't want me to go there, right? And I was like, no. It's like, okay, well, you can't tell anybody. Okay. But I knew, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. I felt like it was wrong. As a kid, 
I remember I had to have been 14 because it was after my grandfather passed away. And I remember I felt like shit that he passed away because number one, he was, he was my grandfather. I didn't, he's gone. There's a lot of feelings, even till this day, that I feel. Um, I feel worthless. I feel like a piece of shit. I feel like a coward. Because I never told my grandfather. I kept telling myself, you're gonna, one of these days you're going to be brave and you're going to tell Bobby. And Bobby's going to make this all go away. And then he died. And I never had that opportunity to tell him. To this day, there's some times where I wake up and I feel like that eight-year-old little boy, powerless, helpless. I mean, there's times I, I haven't shared with Allie where there's days where I don't want to do a single fucking thing. I lay down and, you know, there's times where she's like, hey, why don't you do this or do that? And like, I don't want to. And she doesn't know because I haven't, I haven't communicated that to her. I don't feel like doing anything because I start thinking of why the fuck did I let it happen for so long? When I turned 18, why didn't I beat the shit out of him? When I was 19, why didn't I beat the shit out of him? When I was 15, why didn't I be, why wasn't I brave enough to say anything? And that's been one of my things. That's been one of the biggest issues that I've had with myself. You weren't brave enough. I never knew, I never knew what grooming was. I never knew how sexual predators operate until after I started talking about it. Until I started reading some stuff. Until I started watching documentaries. Until I met Allie, and Allie was very knowledgeable about things of that nature because she... You like murder and stuff, like murder documentaries and <laughs> podcasts and stuff. So like, you know, she's read a lot of articles and there's, there's times where we've had conversations and she goes, you know, it's, if there's a, a news story and they say, oh, blah, 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 Allie goes, and not that Allie's an expert, nor does she pretend to be an expert. She just goes, the things that I've read, the things that I've heard that I've seen from other cases that I've heard of and read about. Is this is the pattern, or this is their MO. And, you know, you read into it, and she's right. I'm like, oh, shit. And that was, that was part of his, his thing. He was constantly reminding me that he, can, he could get in trouble. And there was times where he would, he started telling me, don't tell, like, if you tell the family, they're not going to believe you. So then it, it, it went from, you don't want me to get hurt, right? No. no. And then it started turning into, nobody's going to believe you. Then it took, as I got older, it started taking a dark twist. Because it wasn't, Sorry, guys. It started, you know, it, it went away from, you don't want me to get hurt, right? No. 
to then, like I said, I got older and it was like, nobody's going to believe you. Who do you think they're going to believe? Me or you? I'm older. And I've always seen them as that. Older, stronger, better. He's like... He's like a movie... You know, like killers in movies? Like Michael Myers. Where the, you know, the other characters are trying to get away and he's always fucking there. They stab him 12 fucking times and he, boom, he's still there. I've always seen him as he has this invincibility. And it's, it, it has scared me. I know he's not invincible. I know that for a fact. But up until, I mean, up until I started talking about it when I was 24, 25, I felt, I felt like that, you know? And when I got older, here was the other thing. I always thought, I always thought the last time was going to be the last time. And it was never the last time. When I got older, I kept, I kept telling them, like, look, my dick's not hard. I don't like it. Like, let's get back to, to, to watching Star Wars. Let's get back to watching, you know, movies. Let's get back to having a good time, swimming in the pool, getting ice cream. All these, all these fun things that we would be doing together. Let's get back to that. Let's, let's leave the you touching me that I don't want you to do. Let's leave that alone. My penis isn't hard anymore. Well, I shouldn't say anymore. My penis was never hard. See, look. It's not, I don't like it. Like I said, that would just, that would just piss him off. There was one time at our house. And it happened, it was pretty much the same situation when it happened in my house and his childhood home. There was a time where I was going to the bathroom, he followed me, late at night, we were having like a movie night, he follows me to the bathroom, he goes to our room, where me and Greg were sleeping. Or, or me and Greg's room is, was, and he goes, come here. I went, what? Come here. You know, my mom is asleep. It's late at night. We're, you know, I would only assume that this was a non-school night. Because it was late. My mom was already asleep. And so was uh, my grandma. So he pulls me into the room, and again, let me see it. I don't want to. Let me see it. So he, you know, as I'm pulling my pajama bottoms, I would assume that I was wearing, he, you know, assisted me. And, you know, he puts my hand on his penis, he grabs my penis. So he starts jerking me off, he has me jerk him off. And I remember he was... He was always hard. He was always hard every time this happened. And again, my kid dick isn't hard. Aside from the fact that I'm a, I'm a kid and he's an adult. And he's... And then he gets mad at me. He's like, why isn't your dick hard? Because I, I don't want to do this. I don't like it. So he has me lay down on my bed. And he puts my penis in his mouth. And he starts jerking himself off. The lights were off. So I don't know. I don't know if he came. When the... When the officer yesterday asked me, hear the thunder? 
When the officer asked me yesterday, how long did it last? I said, I don't know, man. Five, ten minutes? Felt like a fucking lifetime. So I remember I'm just laying back. And I started, I do this thing, I mean, even now. And it's because of what happened to me for many years. If somebody's screaming at me, and I mean, Allie could attest to this. And I've told her why. Somebody could be screaming at me. Something bad can be happening. And if I don't want to listen to it, I can stare you straight in the face and I go off to this place. I'm physically there in front of you. I'm looking at you. I will have no reaction. Because my mind goes, boop, 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 boop. Because that's how I was coping with these traumatic events. Anytime he was touching me, I had to learn real quick to go somewhere else. Because I didn't, I didn't want to be there. So that time, he had my penis in his mouth. He's jerking himself off. And then I was terrified because I was like, we don't, we don't, we didn't have a lock on our door. And I was like, somebody's going to walk in. Nobody did. I was praying to God that somebody would walk in, catch him doing what he was doing. Nope. Never happened. Um, another time it happened when we were at his childhood home. Same thing where he was, you know, let me see it. But this time we were in his room and he felt super safe in there. It was like his fortress. If you went down the hallway to where his room was, his room was the last one on the right, if I remember correctly. We went in there and he was like, look at all, look, look at all this porn I have for you. I said, Dude, I don't fucking care about the porn. I don't want to look at it because I know what it means. Did the same thing. Let me see it. Helps me pull down my pants. This time we were laying down in his bed. And I was closer to the window. So he grabbed my penis with his right hand. He put my hand, my left hand on his penis. I was like, oh, fuck, man. And then he got mad again. Why isn't your penis hard? Motherfucker, because I don't want this to happen. I didn't say that. I wanted to. I just said the same thing that I said before. I don't, I don't want this to happen. Then he gives me a, a porn magazine. And he opens it up and he goes, look at that. Look at that woman's pussy. So I'm looking at it. I'm looking at, you know. A woman's pussy and her boobs and everything. And he starts putting my penis in his mouth. And he starts jerking himself off. Then, if I remember correctly, he asked me, there might be something wrong with me. He goes, I'm making you feel good and you're not getting hard. Hey man, I don't like this shit. There's nothing. And at the time I thought there was something wrong with me. I was like, oh my God, is there something wrong? And when I was 14, I started going out with my girlfriend. And I remember I remember like you know, I know I know 14-year-olds have sex. But I don't... I, sh I shouldn't have lost my virginity at 14. And the confusing part was, when I was with my girlfriend, who we were both freshmen, I was all kinds of hard. I was excited. I'm ready to go. And then the confusing part was, Wait, but when Fernando's doing this to me, I don't like it. 
then I started getting angry at myself because I was like, dude, you know, you don't like this. And you tell them, but you have to be more forceful. There was always this dialogue between myself where I'm like, you got to fucking tell them. And then it would happen. I was, I was too, I was too chicken shit to say anything other than like, no, I don't like this. Look, my penis isn't hard, but I never at no point was I like, fucking stop. I didn't feel like I could. Again, just because I was older didn't mean that I, I, I felt like that eight-year-old. And then I got into, he moved, there was, he moved to Orange. And I would go visit him. Mostly because his friend Josh would come around. And I, I liked his friend Josh. His friend Josh was hilarious. I had a good time with him. My cousin Rick, which at the time, he wasn't my cousin Rick. But Rick was there. And he was living with him. And fucking Rick was dope. This white kid from Texas. Hey, y'all, what's going on? And I just always, I always had a good time. And what I always thought to myself was, same thing. I was in the mentality of, if I go down this time, it's not going to happen. I'm older now. My dick still doesn't get hard when this happens. He's going to get it. And he never got it. There was times where I would go spend the night and I would, I would almost beg Rick to let me sleep in his room with him because the times where I would sleep over, I'd normally stay in the living room. They'd give me a couple blankets. I think there was a pullout, pullout bed on the couch and I would sleep it out in the living room. And when that would happen, Rick was there. He'd go to the back room. That's where his room was. And then Fernando's boyfriend, Nate. He'd go to his room because he, you know, it'd be like fucking midnight. He was like, okay, I'm, it's time to go to bed for me. So everybody would go to sleep. And then Fernando would stay out there in the living room. And he's like, all right, let me see it. Come on. Fuck. The times that I would... The times that I would ask Rick, like when we were all in the living room together, I go, hey, Rick, can I sleep in, in your room with you? There was a lot of times that I felt Rick was confused. Like, why do you want to come sleep in my room? You're going to be sleeping on the floor, at least out here. And I remember him telling me, at least out here, you got a bed. I'm like, no, 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 no. I like sleeping on the floor. And I'd make all these excuses. Oh, it's cool. Like, no, I'm just sleeping there. No, I don't like sleeping out in the living room because, you know, like the light comes in. And I'd try to make every fucking excuse just so Rick can go, yeah, okay. And I mean, it never, it, you know, I didn't have to get that far. But Fernando would get upset. Fernando would start like, why do you want to sleep in there with him? That's weird. And I was like, I would think in my head, you motherfucker, you know exactly why I want to sleep in Rick's room. Because then you can't fucking touch me. And then Fernando left to Austin. And I was like, fuck yeah. He's gone. I don't ever remember talking to him much when he left. Because I didn't want to talk to him. But I think in there, there was times that I talked to him. Like, he'd call somebody and, like, oh, hey. And, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm all right. But it was never like, hey, what's going on, man? Nope. I did not. I was not happy to see him. And then I started hanging out with Rick. I think Rick moved in with Josh. I think Rick moved in with Josh. I could be wrong. Um, but when Fernando left, I started hanging out with Rick. Because Rick, Rick was dope. Rick is dope. 
And I kept telling myself, fuck, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him. And then I never, I never had the strength to tell him. Then I was working at Disneyland. This is, you know, I'm like, I think at this point, maybe I'm 22, 23, maybe 24. What, how old was I in 2007? Did we, I think I was 24. Um, no, I, I think I was 24. Okay. 24. The last time it happened that Fernando sexually abused me was November 17th, 2007. You asked me, Jess, how can you remember after so many years? I'll tell you how I remember. The day I flew back from Houston, back to, I believe I flew into Ontario, the Houston Dynamo were playing the New England Revolution at RFK Stadium. MLS Cup, November 18th, 2007. Houston Dynamo won, two to one. I remember going back home and my girlfriend at the time was like, oh, hey, are you excited? MLS Cup. And I was like, eh. I went back home and I laid in our room and, you know, I laid down in the bed. The TV was there. I turned it on and I just, I think towards the end of the game, I fell asleep because I just, I felt, I felt like shit. I felt like a fucking moron for going out there and visiting him, thinking that he wasn't going to do anything. All these, all these emotions, I felt drained. I wasn't, I mean, I always get excited for, for soccer. Not that day. I was talking to him, I was talking to Fernando, and I was telling him, like, man, I'm just kind of having a hard time over here, and I don't know exactly what it was. I was like, you know, work's a little stressful, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And he tells me, hey, I'll buy you a ticket to come visit me in Austin. For like four or five days. I don't remember exactly how many days. And I went, really? He goes, yeah. So I talked to my bosses at Disneyland, and I said, hey, can I? And they go, yeah. So I got the time approved, and I flew out. He bought me a ticket on Express Jet. I remember it was Express Jet because when I heard the name Express Jet, I thought I was going on a jet. I didn't know much about airplanes. I was like, whoa, like a private jet? Or like something similar? I knew it wasn't a private jet, but I was like, ooh, something similar and fancy? No, it was just, it was an RJ. That's all it was. So I flew out and I remember the first thing landing in Austin. I remember seeing how green it was. I was like, oh, this is different. I, I, I thought Texas was going to be, you know, tumbleweeds and dirt everywhere. It looked beautiful. And I thought to myself then, landing, I was like, this trip is going to be different. This is where he realizes that I'm finally an adult. You know, he's living with his boyfriend, Nate. Like, you know, he's... He's got everything. He has, you know, a job here that, you know, he loves. Um, I don't remember what he did, but I think Nate worked for Blizzard, the people that make uh, or made World of Warcraft. I think that's who Nate worked, worked for. Anyways, I was very positive that, ni that night. Nate went to bed. I know, buddy. I know. Nate went to bed, and Fernando stayed out in the living room with me. All the lights were off. The TV was on. And he said, "Let me see it." I went, "No, Nate's Nate's right in there. Like it's fine. He's not gonna come out." I was like, I don't want to. He's like, come on. I was like, no. He's like, come on. Like, I don't want to do it. He's like, just pull your pants down. 
Fuck. He grabbed my penis, put my hand on his. His dick was hard, mine wasn't. That time he didn't say anything that my penis, penis wasn't hard. He moved to putting my, my penis in his mouth while well, he jerked himself off and I was sitting there watching the TV. He finishes, goes to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. The same feeling hit me after it was done. I wanted to die. Every single fucking time, I wanted to die. Lord, have somebody catch us. Lord, strike me down with lightning. Lord, let me have a fucking heart attack. Lord, let me just stop breathing. Kill me. I wanted to die. I did not want that shit to fucking happen, and it happened again. And I was 20... 24 years old. The next day, I had taken my soccer stuff. I took my cleats, my shin guards, and a soccer ball. I told him, I said, I'm going to go find, I'm going to go find a park. Like, oh yeah, you right over there. Me and Nate are going to go to work. Okay. So I remember I went to the field. There was some college Close. I don't think it was the University of Texas, but I could be wrong. Um, Because I think, I don't know if the University of Texas is downtown or just the stadium's downtown. I really don't know. So I'm at these fields, and I want to say I get there, let's say maybe like one or two in the afternoon. And I stayed there till it got dark. I remember him calling me. He was like, where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm playing soccer. He's like, well, come home. I didn't want to. I was like, oh, I met some people. I'm playing soccer with them. It's like, okay, well, you came out to see me. He was getting angry that I wasn't home yet. Because he called me earlier. He's like, hey, I'm going to be home at this time. So yeah, yeah, I'll be there. And I didn't want to go home at that particular time because I knew it was only going to be me and him at the house because we had to go pick up Nate. So on purpose, I didn't come home. I mean, I was, I was out playing soccer with some, with some guys. And, you know, then he called me. He's like, where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm still over here. I'm lost, lost track of time. Well, hurry up. Like, you got to get here. We got to go pick up Nate. And then he called and called. And then I finally picked up after he picked up Nate. He's like, where are you? Oh, I'm still over here. He's like, still? Yeah. And then again, you came to see me. You didn't, you know, come to play soccer. And I was like, I know. Okay, I'll get home. That night, nothing happened. I know it happened the night we went to go see Be Be Beowulf. Beowulf? Beowulf? The animated one. Or the, I guess the newest one. Whichever one came out in 2007. Um... And then the next night, um, some of the guys, some of the people that I met at playing soccer, I was like, "What are you guys doing tonight?" I'm like, "Oh, we're gonna go drinking. You guys, you wanna come with us? We'll pick you up." Like, yes, take me with you. So sure enough, I left with some strangers. We went to this bar. We were playing pool. And then one of the girls in the group, she was like, oh, let's go back to my house. And yeah, let's fucking go. I didn't, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know these people. Let's go. It was like 1 a.m. And this one girl goes, uh, She's like, I want to keep partying. I go, yeah, me too. I want to keep fucking partying. Let's go. Because again, I kept thinking, if I go home, it's going to happen. 
if I stay out with these people, he can't get to me because I'm not, I'm not at his, at his house. So this, this girl who I don't know wants to keep partying. It's like, I think it was like midnight, almost one. And everybody's like, oh, we got to fucking go. And I'm like, and I'm just like, oh, why don't we keep, why don't, mm, burp, 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 burp. Everybody's like, no, man, we're, you know, not only are we a little, you know, buzz or a little wasted, like, nah, we got to get up in the morning. And I was like, fucking hey. And like a godsend, this girl goes, I want to keep partying. Oh, yeah, me too. She tells me, I have to go pick up my, I have to go pick up my son at my mom's house. Then we can go back to my house and we can keep drinking. And I go, perfect. In my head, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? But I was like, I'm acting irrational. I'm going, I'm going to somebody's, to a stranger's house. I don't know who the fuck she is. Anything could happen to me. But you know what? Anything is better than going to, back to Fernando's house. So he went to this girl's mom's house. I walk in with her and I'm thinking the whole time she had a Mustang. I remember that the whole time. I'm like, this is fucking weird. I go in. The girl says hi to her mom. The mom looks at me and goes, who are you? And I went, Oh, hi, I'm Jesse. She was like, how do you know my daughter? And I go, Oh, I just met her tonight. She's like, what? She goes, hold on. Her mom lived in an apartment. So I hear her, the girl that I was with, she went to go get her son from, I'm, I'm assuming her mom's room. I don't remember whether it was a two or one bedroom. And I hear the mom in the other room talking to her daughter. And she's like, who is this guy? And, you know, the girl's like, oh, he's a friend. And she was like, he just said that he met you tonight. I'm like, uh, this is awkward. And the girl was like, mom, don't worry about it. And I mean, the mom was genuinely concerned for her daughter. Rightfully so. She doesn't know who the fuck I am. The girl doesn't know who the fuck I am. We just met that night. We met like four hours before. She comes out. She puts her son next to me. I want to say her son was maybe like four or five. And he's looking at me. I'm looking at him. He's in his, you know, pajamas. And I'm just like, what's up, man? The mom keeps talking to the, her daughter in the next room. Just like, you're not leaving anywhere with him. And I was like, oh, fuck it, dude. And I just kept thinking, please, please just let your daughter do this irresponsible thing. I promise I'm not doing anything to her. I just don't want to fucking go home. And sure enough, the girl was like, no, I'm going to do whatever I want. And thank God. Because we went back to her house. And at this point, Fernando's calling me. Where are you? He's left me a couple messages. What the fuck are you doing? I don't even know who you're with. You could be dead somewhere. And I wanted to tell him, fuck you. Because if I go back to your house, you're going to fucking molest me again. I didn't pick up. I didn't pick up. I didn't call him back. I didn't do shit. We get back to this girl's house. We're in the living room. She pours us a drink. Something mixed. And she goes, I'm going to put my son down. I'm like, okay. So she goes, puts her son down, comes back out. She puts a movie on. Now we're just talking. I'm telling stories, you know, oh, I work at Disneyland, blah, blah, blah. What do you want to know? Blah, 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 blah. She's telling me, you know, about her drama with her baby daddy. I could give a flying shit about her personal life. And I don't mean that I don't mean to be mean. I don't mean that to sound mean. Um but I but I just didn't. But I knew that I had to pay attention to her so that I wouldn't go get sexu sexually abused by my cousin Fernando. Then I start getting tired. I think it was like 3 a.m. 3, yeah, like 3 a.m. It was late. Like, fuck. And she just wanted, like, let's have another drink. I'm like, okay. Then I'm like, you know what? 
this isn't this is better than what I than having somebody sexually assault me or sexually abuse me. Then I tell her, hey, let's do some shots. Because then I start thinking, if I get her drunk enough, she's going to pass out, and then I can pass out. Yeah, let's do a couple shots. Okay. I think we did two shots. And then she started with the, oh, we should go to my room. I was like, oh, yeah, we should. So now... We're in her room. She's passed out. I mean, snoring. And I'm like, thank God. I go out in the couch. And I fall asleep. I don't know, like 5 a.m. Then in the morning. Then I was like, okay, this is going to be real awkward in the morning. Because she's going to realize, like, what the fuck did I just do? Like, I just let a random guy into my house. Nope. I was sleeping on the couch. I wake up. She went to go get us breakfast and coffee. And I went, ooh, I don't drink coffee. She's like, oh, that's okay. So we ate. I hung out with her till about, I think, noon, one o'clock. And she, she told me, she goes, you can stay here as long as you want. Because that day she said that she, she was working from home. Either she was working from home or she didn't have to work. And I wanted to tell her, girl, I'll stay with you all fucking day. I, like, I don't want to go back to Fernando's house. I was like, fuck, I got to go back. Tomorrow I leave. If I remember correctly, he came to pick me up. I gave him the address. And if I remember correctly, he was like, you're kind of far from here. I go, well, I mean, this is where I ended up. Picks me up and he was just like, oh, so how'd you meet these people? He was, you can tell that he was bothered that I didn't go back home or that I didn't return his calls. Because then he started with the, you know, I'm responsible for you while you're out here. If your mom, if something happens to you, your mom's going to get pissed at me. And as he's telling me all this shit, I want, in my head, I'm like, no, motherfucker, you just want to touch my dick. You, you want to touch my dick and you want me to touch your dick. That's what you want. You can give a shit if I'm fucking hurt or anything bad's happening to me. You are doing the bad thing. You fucking piece of shit. On the way back to the house, he goes, oh, we're going to have Rudy's. I don't know if you've ever had Rudy's. And I'm like, no, like, you know, clearly I don't live out here. That was one of the good things that came from that day. Had Rudy's for the first time. Like, oh, this shit's good. That night, November 17th, 2007, I tried to hang out with Nate. We'll have Nate hang out with us for as long as possible because I thought to myself, if I keep using the, hey, Nate, I haven't seen you in a while, he's going to, like, yeah, you're right. And not go to bed. And if he doesn't go to bed, or if we all pass out in the living room, Fernando can't do anything to me. And I had to be up super early the next day to catch my flight home. I go into the room where I was sleeping. Fernando comes in. Tells me, let me see it. Pull your pants down. No, man. Come on. It'll be quick. So there they go. He starts touching my dick. He has me touch his dick. He once again gets upset that my penis didn't get hard. Puts my penis in his mouth. Proceeds to jerk off. He finishes. Now, when I say he finishes from, from when it first happened to the first time I saw him jerking himself off to the last time, I never saw him come. When I say he finished, 
the sexual assault stopped. I don't know why. He could have came. I never saw him come. He could have just done it to get himself going, and then he was going to go fuck his boyfriend. I don't know. But then he was... <laughs> had my penis in his mouth, and then he stopped. Then he goes, okay, I'll see you in a couple hours. Take you to the airport. Every time, every time I felt dirty. I felt like I couldn't get clean enough. It takes me to the airport. Hey, thanks for coming. Fast forward to I moved to Susanville. My girlfriend at the time, she breaks up with me. And we're having a conversation. And in my head, the reason why I told her is because I thought it was going to help us stay together. And I remember her telling me, she goes, she goes holy shit. And I think I remember her saying, because she was... um. She was going to school for like some psychology thing, if I remember correctly. She starts crying and she was like, I can't believe that I couldn't even detect this in my own boyfriend. And she told me, she goes, I remember her telling me, you need to get help. Like you need to talk to a therapist. And then again, the reason why I initially went to the therapist is because I thought to myself, if I show her that I'm talking to the therapist and I'm trying to work work through this she's going to take me back and after the first session i was like oh no that's not this is not what's going on I, we're done i wasn't happy about it but i was like yeah no this is like there's a lot of shit inside of here that i need to let out and i started talking to my therapist and i want to say If I remember correctly, the first person I told, I called my sister. And I was up in my room. I was renting a room from uh, my English teacher. It was my English teacher. My triathlon coach was also renting a room. They were best friends. And my triathlon coach, like I told her, like, oh, I'll be moving back to, you know, L.A. because, like, I don't have a living situation here anymore. And she was like, no, you can just... I was like, yeah, I'd like to stay around. And so I moved in with them. And they would leave usually Thursday night. I don't know where I left off because the baby started crying. Not crying, but he was getting a little fussy, so Ali went downstairs with him. Um, where did I leave off? Fuck, I don't remember where I left off. Anyways. Um, So yeah, so it happened November 17th, 2007 was the last time it happened in Austin, Texas at Fernando's place. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about when I told Carrie. There we go. So I'm up in my room. Uh, my, my English teacher, my triathlon coach, they would leave. Um, they leave town. So my triathlon coach, she had her family lived in Reno. So she would come up to teach. And Thursday night or Friday afternoon, she would go back home. So they were never there for the weekend. They'd usually come back like early Monday morning or they'd go to, they'd go to work at school. And then after school, they'd come home uh, Monday afternoon or night. So I always had weekends to myself. My English teacher, she had, her and her partner, they had a house in Chico where her partner lived because I think she worked out there. So same thing, Thursday night or Friday afternoon after classes, my English teacher would leave. So like I said, I was, 
I had the house every single weekend to myself. And it could have been the second or third time that I talked to the therapist. I felt courage enough, like, okay, I'm going to tell somebody. And why not tell my sister? She'll believe me. So I call her, I have a conversation with her, and I tell her, this is what Fernando did. And I'm crying, and she's crying. And, you know, I'm sorry that that happened, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this is crazy. Well, then apparently, she called Fernando to let him know that I said something. My sister called to tip my cousin Fernando Blanco off to let him know that I might say something to somebody. The next day, was it the next day? Was it that weekend that I told her? Now, now that I think about it, it, I don't know if it was a weekend. I could have done it during the week when uh, the ladies were gone. Because the next day, I was at school. I was at school, and I, I get a call from Fernando. And he is, you could tell in his voice that he was scared shitless. When I tell you he called me scared, that made me feel good. He was scared I was going to tell somebody. He was scared I was going to tell the cops. And that he was going to go to jail for it. He was terrified. He called me and he was crying. The power I felt over him felt good. In that instance, I thought to myself, now you know how I feel, you fucking piece of shit. Now you're the one that feels helpless. Fuck you. I felt like I had. I had the power in that situation. Because I did. And I was telling him, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't believe you did this to me. He was, oh, but I, did, I didn't. I don't know. And blah, blah, blah. Here's something else that he told me that I just remembered the other day when I was talking to our family friend, Kelly. Fernando to, told me two things that stuck out to me. Two things. One, he told me that I wanted it. I remember you, you saying you wanted it. And I said, no, the fuck I didn't. I never fucking told you that I wanted it. I was like, Fernando, I'm like almost yelling in the quad up in Lassen Community College. I'm like, I never fucking told you I wanted it. When the fuck did I tell you I wanted it? Yelling. People are walking by like, what the fuck is he talking about? Who the fuck is he talking about? Or talking to? He's like, oh, I thought you wanted it. And I thought, I thought we were having a good time. I go, we never had a fucking good time. He's like, fuck you for saying that. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and sorry. My anger. Oh, my anger was so intense. So he told me that. I was like, you fucking piece of shit. How dare you tell me that a little kid, and I remember telling him over and over, how can a little kid want an adult to fucking touch him like that? Fuck you. Then he told me. Well, our cousin Nikki did it to me. And my parents and Nikki's parents knew, and they just said, it's not going to happen again. And they just brushed it under the rug. That's what Fernando told me. So if Nikki 
or Danny, if you're watching and you're listening, you should have a conversation with Fernando. Because that's what he told me. So maybe you guys should have a conversation with that piece of shit. Then at the time, I told him, I said, I don't fucking care if it happened to you. Why did you do it to me? Then he starts telling me, what, what can I do? What can I do to help you? What can I do to make you feel better? What can I? Again, crying. You, the terror in his voice felt good. Real good. And I told him, I said, I don't know exactly the amount that I told him, but I was like, send me $5,000. And I remember him saying, I don't have that kind of money. I said, I don't fucking care. Send me the money. I think he sent me $3,000. He goes, I'm gonna, let me give you a call back. Let me see what I can do. Because um, then he started telling me, I'm sending you this money because I know, I know you need it. And I just want to make sure that you have everything you need. And I don't want you to, to not be able to eat and blah, 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 blah. So then he turned it into, he was doing it for me because he cared about me. I was like, this motherfucker is still like, that's when I realized he's not sorry. He's sorry that now I'm talking about it and not sorry. I'm sorry. What I meant is now he's scared that I'm talking because before he never had to worry about me talking because he had me trained. He had me trained real good to shut my fucking mouth. And now I'm like, nah, bitch, not anymore. The, I'm telling you, the fear in his voice, I'll never forget that. So he sends the money, I think it was like MoneyGram or whatever wire transfer, to Walmart. And I pick it up. So now I have this cash. I have $3,000 cash in my hand. I remember going to I believe I was getting around on a bike a lot um cause me and my girlfriend at the time we had the car together and then when we broke up I believe it was under her name so she you know obviously she kept it and I was just like I was walking to and from school which wasn't it wasn't far um but I mean there was times where during the snow like when it snowed I'd walk up there and you know because uh, I was a assistant soccer coach, or my head coach, my head coach would be uh, driving by. He's like, "Hey, you want to ride?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay." Other times I'd be like, "No, I'm good." They were like, "You're fucking crazy." Sometimes some of our players they'd ask me, "Do you want to ride?" Sure. You know, other teachers, other faculty, they'd be, like, "Do you want to ride?" Like, what are you doing? Like, uh, I'm trying to get to work. I'm trying to get to school. So I get home and I lay the money down. And that day, I want to say it was a Friday. I laid the money down. And I have $3,000 cash in front of me. I start crying. Because then I feel like shit. Because I thought to myself, is that what, is that what I've, is that what I've, am, me accepting this $3,000, what does that say about me? Like, it's just going to go away? No. This money isn't making me feel good. Do I need the money? Yeah, I needed shit. But at what cost? Crying. Then I started thinking, I should give it back to him. And I was like, fuck him. No. When I asked for the money, I wanted, I wanted to hurt him. The only way that I knew how was to tell him to give me a, a large amount of money. So like I said, he sent me the money. I took the money. I accepted the money. Fuck you. That made me feel dirty. 
I moved back. I moved back to Southern California. And I'm like, I'm ready to tell my mom. I tell my mom after a church service. My mom tells me. Or no, I hadn't moved back. I was visiting. I was visiting. My mom tells me. It's your fault. Then when she said, when you got older, you wanted it because you kept going to visit him. And I went, what? Crying. I'm like, you fucking bitch. What? Before I can say more, Moises, Robert's dad, he chimes in. And he starts laying into her. How dare you call yourself his mom? It's like, your son just told you something traumatic and you're blaming him he's like no parent should ever do that to their children if your child's telling you something you listen and you believe them i was like at that moment that moment has been the moment that has fucked up my relationship with my mom i've never i've never been able to see her differently because I feel like now I know that you think it was my fault. Fuck you. Fuck you for saying that. You pray to a God that allows you to think that way? If you do, hey, I told her the other day, fuck you and fuck your God. There was times where she would call me Oh, we're having a, a, a party. Family party. Don't worry, Fernando's going to be there, but you just, you just don't have to say hi to him. Huh? So you think that being sexually abused for years is the same as Fernando said something mean to me and I don't like him. Just don't say hi to him. Fuck no. I was constantly telling her, why the fuck are you inviting me if he's going to be there? Are you fucking stupid? Well, you don't have to act like that. You don't have to say that. You can be the better person. You know, Jesus wants us. Fuck you and fuck Jesus. Fuck you both. If Jesus is okay with adults touching little kids, then everybody can fuck right off. Forgiveness, that's for Jesus, not for me. Fuck that. It makes me so fucking angry when people, not mostly my mom, it makes me fucking angry when she tells me, just, just forgive him. He's your family. Fuck that shit. It should make it worse that he's my family. At least a stranger doesn't know you and is willing to hurt you. But family, no. I finally moved back. Oh, there was a time. Yes. So I moved back. Our relationship hasn't been good. Then I get a job as a flight attendant. I leave. By this time, the only person that I've told is Carrie, my mom, and Greg. And my mom, again, from jump, she told me that it was my fault and that I wanted it. Yeah. Then... Fast forward to, I'm visiting one time. I'm visiting Southern California. I'm still in Houston. My mom calls me and says, Fernando's on his way to pick mommy up from the house. And I went, what? I'm dead asleep. And I said, tell him not to come. And she's like, well, he's already on his way. Just, just don't come out of the room. And I was like, what? I remember the doors closed, still has no lock. I'm a grown adult. I'm what, 29? I hear his voice in the house and I start shaking. I hear his voice. He's talking. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. I hear him ask my grandma. Oh no, my mom showed up maybe five minutes later. He tells my mom, oh, I heard Tito's in town. Where is he? My mom, the only good thing that she's ever fucking done since this whole bullshit has happened, she tells him, oh, he's gone with friends right now. He's not here. Oh, I really wanted to see him and say hi. He left. Everybody left. 
I get dressed. I had, I had already been dressed. I just put whatever. I walked, if you know Montclair and the nearby cities, I walked from my house up to Foothill. I went from Foothill. I went all the way, or was it Arrow Highway? I think I went, yeah, yeah, I think it was Arrow Highway. Arrow Highway, and I walked all the way almost to Rancho. And I, I stopped at this bar, started doing shots. Started drinking. My buddy Joe, um, I called Allie and I was like, uh, I'm not okay. She's pissed. I can't believe your mom fucking allowed him to go, go to the house. Joe, you know, Allie called Joe. She was like, you need to go find him. He said he's over here. I think Joe called him. I was like, yeah, I'm over. He comes over and then we just talk the rest of the night and, you know, Joe helped calm me down he's like dude that's fucking insane fast forward to we moved back to LA we Allie keeps telling me like oh you know cause we live in Hermosa Beach and I was like oh we should go f- see your family I was like I don't want to go fucking see my mom like but whatever we'd go almost every Sunday or at least the Sundays we could Then there's this issue that comes up where Nikki, his woman, Carrie, Daniel, Jason, and Greg come out. I think it was like Memorial Day weekend. We, you know, had a good day at the beach. We go to Hennessy's to eat after. Carrie's telling us, I'm going to pay for you and Allie's drinks and food. And we said, no, don't do that. She said, yeah, no. She's like, I'm going to do it. Server comes over, it's time to pay the check. The server says, your sister took care of it. And I went, why the fuck did you do that? Ah, oh, because, okay, whatever. Get back to the house, she leaves. Greg later on asked me for 200 bucks. And I went, why the fuck do you need money? I thought you, just, like, you were just talking about how you, you know, got money, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't tell me, doesn't tell me, doesn't tell me. I give him the money. The next day before he leaves, I ask him again, like, what the fuck happened? He tells me. Carrie tried paying for the food. Her card got declined, which apparently happens or happened a lot with Greg. Because then Greg was stuck paying whatever she was fucking buying. And she wouldn't pay him back. So then he said, I had to pay. And it was like, it was like 150 bucks. He's like, I was, you know, like I have diapers and shit to buy for Jason. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? So I think I gave him a little, me and Allie gave him a little extra just so he's, he's good. So we made sure that he was whole and covered. And then I call Carrie and my mom and I go, Hey, this weekend, me and Allie are going to go, we have something to talk about. And Carrie gets into her. What? What is it? I said, you owe Greg fucking money. No, I don't. He owes me my, but I, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it. We get there on Sunday. Carrie's leaving for church. My mom wasn't there. She had left for church already. Carrie's about to leave for church. She's like, oh, hey. And I go, are, are you you're leaving right now? And she's like, yeah. And I go, okay, well, when you come back, we need to talk. She's like, okay. And I was like, yeah. She's like, well, I don't know what time I'm going to come back. And I go, I don't give a shit. When you come back, we're fucking talking. Okay, fine. So she leaves all pissed. She comes home and I said, hey, you know, my mom finally got there. I said, hey, come out here. And she's like, I don't need to talk to you. I said, get the fuck out here. We all sit down and I tell my mom, okay, we need to have a conversation. Carrie blows up. You guys are always accusing. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? How can I be accusing you of something you did? You did it. Then she says, she tells me, the only reason why you said Fernando did that is because you wanted money from him. You're fucking lying. I lost it. You goddamn fucking cunt. I, 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 was, I was here, and I, I'm screaming. Windows are open at my, at my grandma's house. I'm yelling, you fucking bitch. I started getting red. Greg started getting red. We're yelling. My mom starts telling us, why are you being so mean to your sister? Then I'm telling her to fuck right off too. So I was like, did you just hear what your daughter said? To me, I, 
I just, I, I'm lying about Fernando because I want money. Fuck you guys. Fast forward to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm stop talking to Carrie, stop talking to my mom, stop coming around. My grandma gets sick. It's not looking good. We go visit her. Uh, I don't remember exactly when, but it was like on a Christmas Eve. I was told I was in Orlando. Christmas Day, I fly back to LA. We go visit her. Then I start coming around again. Well, then my grandma passes away. My grandma passes away. That day, I tell Ali, or I told Danny and Janice, and they're like, "Fuck, we didn't know." Again, today's Tuesday. Last week on Monday, I'm about to take the dogs out, and I get a call from somebody, and they go, "I'm so sorry. I've never told you before, but Fernando did the same thing to me." And I went, "What?" And they were like, "It. Like I've always been scared. Like I saw how you told your family, and..." You know, you told me how your mom didn't believe you. Um, and she said you wanted it and it was your fault and your sister, the way she said that, you know, you were lying. And I was like, what the fuck? And they were like, I'm, I've always been scared to say anything because how, how was your family going to see what happened to me? Nope. So I sent Fernando a text message. I got his number from Danny and I lied to Danny because I said, we're going to have a conversation. Um, which, I mean, I guess technically it was a one-sided conversation. Um, and I sent him this. I said, hey, you child molesting piece of shit. Guess what I found out? You did it to that person as well. Wow. So it wasn't only just me. The person told me the same thing on the phone you told me so many years ago. Because the person sent him a message. And he told this person that he he told this person that um, that they wanted it also and I said false neither of us wanted that we were kids how can a kid want something sexual from an, from an adult you as the adult should have said no but because you like touching little kids you did it and you did it a lot I hear your boyfriend killed himself. Good. All caps. I hope he killed himself twice. Karma's a bitch and you deserve much worse in life. So you aware I filed a police report uh, in Montclair years ago. Tomorrow I have an alarm to talk to an investigator in Montclair and in Austin. I'll see what they tell me and show them the messages you sent the other person admitting what he did. Bad things happen to child molesters in jail. I can bet none of this will get to you. You will continue to live your life as if you did nothing wrong. Just know I won't be happy until you're cuffed up or six feet underground. That's what I sent him. I didn't hear anything that night from him. The next day, my mom calls me. And I can tell she's pissed. So I call her back. And she tells me, Fernando just called me and said, you sent him a nasty message and he's going to block you and put a restraining order on you. And I went, I don't give a fuck. Tell him to put a restraining order on me. Because if he does, he's going to have to tell somebody what he did. He's not going to do that. I had to just take a quick break. Fatherly duties called. And I had to charge the battery because I'm already at about an hour and a half. <clears throat> I'm almost done, I promise. So yeah, Fernando, he didn't, like I said, he didn't reply to, to, to my text. Which, to be honest with you, I didn't think he would. Because why would he? But then I thought to myself, well, why did he reply to the other person's messages. Um, I don't know. That's something that he would have to answer to. And I really don't give a shit why he didn't uh, reply to mine. But whatever. So like a little bitch, he calls my mom. Uh, your son's being mean to me. Me. Uh, tell him. 
So my mom was just telling me, you know, he's going to block you on all social media and he's going to put a restraining order on, on you. And I, you know, I told her, I said, good. I hope he fucking goes to a judge and has to, has to tell the judge why he needs a restraining order from me. Because you just don't go to a police department or wherever you go to and go, I need a restraining order. And they go, boom, granted. No. You go to the court. From my understanding, I could be completely wrong. But from what I was told, you go to the court and you have to plead your case. Why is it that you need a restraining order against this person? What is he going to say? Well, I sexually abused my cousin Jesse, and now he, he might do something to me. So I need protection against that. The court's going to go, you did what? Excuse me? What was that? You did what to who? He's too... I mean, even... I mean, if he were stupid, I would love for him to be stupid enough to go try to get one. I would love that. I don't think he's that stupid. I think what he sees with that text message, and again, this is all assumption because I haven't talked to him, nor do I want to. My assumption is he saw that text message, and I hope. I hope to God he went, oh shit. Holy fuck. I hope right now, I hope he's not sleeping well. I hope he's thinking, I hope Fernando's thinking, oh shit, are cops going to be knocking at my door at any moment? I hope he lives in that fear. And I hope that the police actually go arrest him. That's my hope. So my mom tells me, you better be careful because, and this, I don't know if she didn't make it clear whether he said this or if she's assuming this, but she tells me, you know, he could sue you. And I went, well, what the fuck is he going to sue me for? What is he going to sue me for libel? Is he going to sue me for slander? Okay. That, that you do when somebody's lying. Okay, sue me, motherfucker. Come with it. Because again, then we're going to have to go to court and you're going to have to explain why I'm saying all these things. Because they're going to ask me and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them 100% the truth. And then what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and lie, clearly, because you're not going to admit it because you're too chicken shit. You were, Fernando is such a chicken shit piece of shit that he took advantage of a little kid and then groomed me to make sure that I wouldn't say shit. Because that's what predators do. And to the other person, he did the same thing. He knew what he was doing. So now, now, when there could be consequences, which I hope there are, now he's scared. I hope he's scared. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Again, I don't know if he's actually scared. He could just think, oh, Jess is just talking shit. Okay. Test me, motherfucker. Because guess what? I just talked to an officer. I made a report in Montclair because it happened in Montclair. Now I'm going to have to make a report in Mira Loma because it happened in Mira Loma at his childhood home. I'm going to have to make a report in the city of Orange, California, because it happened there too. And I'm also waiting for the city of Austin, Austin, Texas, for them to call me back so I can make a report because it happened there. So that makes Montclair, Mira Loma, Orange, and Austin, four different locations that it happened at that I'm going to have to make a report. And I really don't give a shit. I'll make the report. The officer in Montclair asked me, did I just want to document it or do I want him arrested? And I go, I want him arrested is what I want. He said, okay, got it. I've stayed silent long enough. 
Not anymore, motherfucker. Not anymore. To where, when I told my mom, I hope he sues me. Bring it. He has, he has nothing on me. Then my mom told me, it wasn't a rape because you were over 18. And I went, what did you say? She said, there was no rape here. And I told her, once again, to go fuck herself. I said, you think that if somebody's over 18, they can't get raped? Okay. Fuck you. Fuck, 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 fuck right off. My mom. Did you hear that correctly? My mother. The person who's supposed to be the one that I love the most in the world. The person that I've always been told loves me no matter what. Will do anything for me no matter what. And in, that, in another moment, another moment she had an opportunity to fix, to act differently, to have a different response than what her first response to me was when I first told her all those years ago that it was my fault and that I asked for it. She had another opportunity. <clears throat> and what did she do? She told me, I was eight, you were 18. There was no rape here. Well, with no respect, fuck you. Fuck, fuck, fuck you, mom. Fuck you so hard. That's like, that's what, that's what, that's what, a, that's what a, that's what a bad person would say. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with words to articulate what I'm trying to convey. And it just like, that's what, to hear your son, your child tell you something happened and to tell me it was my fault to tell me that I asked for it then to once again have to relive relive this shit because of the new information that I found out and for her to get mad at me for sending him a text why the fuck are you protecting that piece of shit because guess what my mom is protecting a child molester a sexual predator. There's no, there's no way else to say it. That's what he is. He's a child molesting, sexual abusing piece of shit. That's what Fernando is. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's just me and this other person. I hope to God it's just the two of us. But usually, when sexual predators do that, it's not just a, oh, well, I'm just going to do it over here. It's usually, I'm going to do it to whoever I can. Because that's the kind of piece of shit person that that person is. The crazy part... Well, then, so... And then I told my brother Greg what my mom said. And I, I mean, I was irate. Irate. And he told me, I don't want to be around mom anymore. He goes, I can't. He, Greg told me that if our mom doesn't believe me, right? Who's to say that if he were to come around, she's going to let Jason go around him. She's going to let any, she's going to let, let Lily, leave Lily around Fernando. She's going to leave the twins around Fernando. No, fuck that. Who's to say that my mom's not going to let, let my son be around Fernando if he were to come around? Absolutely fucking not. And I told my mom, I said, I can't trust you. I said, I can't trust you or Carrie. I can't. I can and I won't. Why? Because Carrie knows. Carrie knows all this shit too. And not only did Carrie say that I was lying, 
Not only did Carrie say I was doing it for money, Carrie has taken her own son around Fernando. What kind of piece of shit are you that you knowing what I told you? You're like, no, it's, it's fine. You're putting your own son in danger. And what, because he's family? That should piss, that should piss my whole family off. Everybody should tell him to go fuck himself. Hey, go fuck yourself. Have a conversation with him. I, I, I wish, I hope that Danny, Nikki, my uncle Nick, my aunt Gladys, um, Danielle, his, his uh, sister, um, his mom, Tia Rossi, everybody in our family. I, I hope they all call him individual and go, hey, what? what the... So I just heard this shit that, that, that Jess said. The fuck's going on? I hope he gets bombarded by these questions. And in turn, I hope they call me or email me or text me. Hey, what is this? What's going on? What's going on is Fernando, our family member, my cousin, sexually abused me for years. And again, why am I saying it now? Is because there's, there's two reasons why. Number one, because of my son. The moment I started this podcast, I always, I always had this thing. Am I going to talk about me being sexually abused by Fernando? Am I going to do it? Should I? Is it even a good idea? Is anybody going to want to hear it? Probably not. And I told myself, if there's a clear sign, if there's a clear sign that I should do this, I'll do it. And then the closer, the, the, the closer and closer it got to my son being born, to our son being born, I was like, fuck, maybe I should. Maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe I should. Then I did it, then I did it, then I did it, then I did it, then I did it. And then, like I said, I got confirmation that it happened to somebody else. And I told Allie, this thing that we call a family is like a tree, right? It needs to be burned to the fucking ground. Because the tree, let's not even call it a tree, let's call it a house. The house is on fu a, a fucked up foundation. Fernando's part of that fucked up foundation. We need to burn it. We need to burn it and we got to start all over. So again, getting confirmation that it happened to somebody else, I told her, nope, let's demolish this shit. That was the other reason, my son and then because of this. And I got a, I got a clear sign. I've been getting signs. Do it, do it, do it. And I've reluctantly kept saying, no, 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 no. And now I'm like, I don't give a shit anymore. Like I said before, today, my grandma was buried. I was supposed to go to the funeral. Oh, the other thing my mom said, I don't know why you're getting so upset. It's not like Fernando's going to be there. That doesn't make it any better. Did you hear what you just fucking told me? No, she doesn't because she wants me to be the better person. She wants me to forgive. Fuck all that. Fuck, fuck, fuck all that shit. Nope. Fernando is a cancer. My cousin Fernando Blanco is a cancer. What do you do with cancer? You get rid of it. You chop it out of your body, or you give your body drugs to attack it, to kill it. That's what Fernando is. He's a cancer. He needs to be... He, need, he, need, he needs to be, to be told, hey, nope, sorry man, you made your decision, now you're going to have to live with it. And I've been thinking... I've been thinking on the walk and the little break I took, took the boys on a walk. And I was like, 
is my family going to get mad at me for, for doing this? And the easy answer is yes. Yes, they're going to get mad at me. But that, that, I, that is a coping mechanism that I'm using. Because if I say they are, and they are, then I'm like, well, see, I told you. Then I look like a genius, which I'm not. I, I really don't know how they're going to take it. I really don't know. But you know what? I really don't give a shit. Because for far too long, my mom told me never to tell my grandma. My mom told me, well, oh, we don't have to talk about it. You don't have to tell anybody else. This is, this is what we do between us. Nope. That's how problems continue to occur. When people don't talk about shit. Now. Now. I'm saying we have to fucking talk about this. Whether you like it or not. I don't give a shit that it was my grandmother's funeral today. Because I was also told this, is a, this isn't the time to, to talk about this. It isn't? Well, guess what? When I first told you, mom, you didn't do a goddamn thing about it then. Because instead of, instead of saying, wow, okay, hmm, what should we do? Instead of my mom saying, you know what? When he's around, I'll make sure you're not around. When he's around, I'll make sure that I'm not around. And then if Tio Nick, Tia Eladi, Tia Rossi, if they ask, then she can tell them or not tell them. But at least there would be this, this, this thing the rest of the family would know. That when Fernando's around, Jess is not around. When Fernando's around, his mom's not around. When Fernando's around, Carrie's not around. When Fernando's around, Daniel's not around. When Fernando's around, Greg's not around. And when Fernando's around, Jason is not going to be around. And the only reason why I use just Jason and not the rest of Greg's kids is because I'm talking more of when I told my mom. At that point, it was just Greg and Jason. Um, I'm not purposely leaving them out. But that could have been taken care of then. And it wasn't. Why? Because my mom didn't want to talk about it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, cool. You don't want to talk about it then? When the fuck else am I supposed to talk about it? And remember, this is my shit to tell. This is my trauma. This is my story. I get to tell it whenever the fuck I want. I don't care. I don't care if it's inconvenient for you. Guess what? You know what was inconvenient? When Fernando was touching my... My kid dick. When Fernando was putting my penis in his mouth. When Fernando was putting my hand on his hard adult dick. And I was a kid. Even, even after I was a kid. When I told him I did not want to. It was inconvenient every fucking time. Every time I wanted to die. The reason why I never wanted kids is because I was terrified that I would do it to my son or daughter. Why did I not ever change Daniel's diaper? Why didn't I ever take a shower with Daniel? Nope. I might do it to him. Why didn't I not change Jason's diaper? Why didn't I not take a shower with Jason? Actually, I did take a shower one time with Jason in the Hermosa house. And I told him, I said, hey, we're going to keep our shorts on. We come out of the shower, and Richie was over at the time, and he tells Jason, hey, how was the shower? And Jason says, Theo's weird. He goes, why is your Theo weird? Because we took a shower with our shorts on. And Richie looks at me and goes, why would you do that? And I said, hey, man, he's not my kid, and I don't know the rules about being naked around little kids. So, no, we shorts on with Theo. Terrified. Terrified. I never changed Noel's diaper, never changed Alexi's diaper, haven't changed Colette's diaper. When Noel would tell me to go to her room, nope, I would, no, oh, no, 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 we can't. 
you know, just recently, Alexi got a big girl bed. And she goes, come to my room. I want to show you. And I said, not right now. I'll see it when everybody else is around. Is what I told her. Even till this day, I'm scared. Why? Because for so long, I've felt, and this is a projection, because of what Fernando did to me, I feel like people, if I, if I am alone with someone's kid, I feel like they're like, are, are you doing something to my kid? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. There was a couple girls that were younger than me. They were 18 and I was, what, 21, 22? Even that didn't work out. I was like, no, this is too weird for me. I never wanted to have kids. Why? Because of what Fernando did. He's, I know people say, don't let it affect you. It's affected me. It's affected me hard. We fly into Austin. For the, for the company I work for. We fly in and out of Austin. The first time I went, I was scared shitless. Because I thought, what if he comes onto one of my, what if he comes onto the plane? What am I going to do? Every time I went in and out of Austin, which wasn't a lot, but it was enough. I felt sick. Didn't want to be there. I just wanted to go home. A couple times I cried in my hotel room. I didn't want to come out of my hotel room. Because God forbid he was around. I didn't know where he was. And thinking about it, you know, you really think Fernando's going to find you in a city like Austin? Probably not. But I didn't want to take that chance. Now it's a little different. Now I'm like, I wish that motherfucker comes up to me. It's going to look weird. He were to come onto one of my planes. I'd just start beating the shit out of him. People start going, some crazy flight attendant just beat the shit out of, a, out of a passenger. Nobody knows why. He just went crazy. Am I looking for that? No. But if it happens, I hope I could control my, my feelings. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what would happen. Yesterday, after talking to the, to the police officer, making that report and going through instances and reliving those stories, after I was shaking, it was like two hours after I, I had, I had finished talking to the, to the police officer, after telling him the stories. And I was, I was shaking. I was downstairs in the kitchen eating. I was having a hard time eating. I was still shaking. I was like, why the fuck am I shaking? Before starting this podcast, like I said, I felt like I was going to throw up. I had this, I had this sick feeling. All because of what he did to me. You know, and I was told, I was told that Fernando has gone through some shit. Okay. Guess what? I don't give a shit. I was talking to my brother. My brother said, just because somebody has gone through trauma doesn't mean that they can force other people to go through trauma. And that's what Fernando did. I don't know what has happened to Fernando when he was growing up. And I don't give a shit. Because what you did what he did, what Fernando did, is if he was going through shit, he fucked up my life. Why? Because he's a selfish piece of shit. Because let me tell you this. I was sexually abused by Fernando for a long time. You know how many people I've sexually abused? Zero. Why? Because I know that just because it happened to me doesn't mean that I get to go do it to somebody else. I've made sure that that shit ends right here with me. It ends. 
It's not going to keep going. I'm not going to be another statistic. Nope, actually, nope, 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 nope. I mean, I'll be the statistic of, oh, there goes a sexually abused person who didn't do it to somebody. Good job. Cool. Also, weird that we have to tell other people not to fucking touch kids. It's weird that we have to tell other people not to murder other people for stupid shit. It's weird that we have to tell people not to rape other people. I mean, nobody had to tell me that. I don't see a little kid and go, Mmm, that's hot, that's sexy. Gross, 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 gross. Can you not get a consenting adult to have sex with you? It doesn't make sense to me. And I don't want, I don't want to understand it. I hope, I hope Fernando listens to this. And I'm going to tag him when I make my posts for tomorrow. I'm going to tag him. He's not going to be happy, but I don't give a shit. I'm going to tag his Instagram. I'm going to put his Instagram in the description. So you, as the viewer, can go, go to his Instagram. Ask him. Leave a comment. Hey, you fucking child molester. Jesse said. Let's make him very uncomfortable. I know I am. I'm going to, I'm going to, I already told Ali. My, one of the things I'm going to do tomorrow is comment child molester on as many posts as I can before he blocks me. I want, I want his friends to see that. Yeah, I want his friends to see it and go, hey, um, this person's calling you a child molester? What's going on with that? I want his, I want his friends to find this podcast episode and listen to it and go, holy shit, can't be friends with that motherfucker anymore. With the permission of the other person, I'm going to try to post the message between the other person and Fernando so you can see what his reply was when the one person asked him, well, when the other person said what they said. So that you can see what he said. Because it, I mean, to me, it sounds like an, an, an omission of guilt. He doesn't say, he doesn't tell the other person, which again, he never told me, but we had a, we had a conversation. I don't have anything in writing. In my conversation, he told me, I thought you wanted it. I thought we were having a good time. No, we weren't motherfucker. I told you no many times. And this other person told you no many other times. And in the text, in the message, he doesn't say, I never did that. He tells the other person that they wanted it, that they were asking for it. And the other crazy thing is, if you look at the other person that he did it to, there's an age gap. And by Fernando's own admission, if you look at the timeline, Fernando was the adult. This other person was underage the entire time. Oh, oh, I think Fernando fucked up. I sent that message to the officer that I was talking to. I said, I'll send you the message that I sent him. I said, because at no point was I threatening him. I said, and I'll get the permission from the other person so that I can send you the message, the messages between them. The officer said, perfect. Yeah, I'll add that into, into the report. I said, perfect. For my family and friends, if you, this is what I want you guys to know. Because this is very important for me. You don't have to 
I'm not asking you to choose sides. I'm not. But just know, with every decision comes... What am I trying to say? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not telling my family and friends to choose sides. I'm not telling you, you know, you have to pick him or you have to pick me. Right? Am I? No, maybe I am. Maybe I am. I think I am. What I'm trying to say is, at this point after knowing what you know, you have a choice. You can continue to talk to Fernando because he's your brother, cousin, friend, you know, family member, whatever. You can continue to talk to him. That's fine. I am not going to talk to you anymore. I can't. Why? Because you're associating yourself, you're, 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 you're hitching your wagon to a child molesting predator. You shouldn't. It should be a very easy. It, 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 this is like the easiest test in the world. That's like if somebody were to tell you Nazis, good or bad, without hesitation, you say bad. There's not a, well, nope. You failed already. Nazis, bad. 100% bad. All Nazis, bad. That's easy. Child molesters, all bad. All bad. Not a, well, nope. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, no. So if you, again, I tell this to my family and friends. If you're going to continue to have a re relationship with Fernando, I'm not going to be able to fuck with you anymore. Because again, I, right, just because I tell you, don't have him around my son, if I'm ever gone and you, you're watching him or whatever. And you go, well, the only reason why I'm not letting Fernando around is because Jess doesn't want him around his son. That should be very, con that you should be concerned with your own decision making. You should, you shouldn't want Fernando around because he's a predator. And if you have kids, it could happen to your kid. It happened when the whole fam, there was times where it happened when we were having family parties. Everybody was around. Crazy. You would think that it, that it only happened when it was just me and him. Nope. It happened at Christmas. It happened at Christmas Eve. It happened on Thanksgiving. Everybody was there. Everybody was in one house. And it still happened. Yeah. Be careful. Because predators are going to predator. That's why. They're not going to stop because, oh, there's too many people around. No, it probably got his dick even harder. Knowing that he was getting away with it with the entire family right over there in the same fucking house. So again, I tell you, if you continue to talk to him, that's fine. I can't talk to you anymore. I won't talk to you anymore. I don't give a shit if you're family. I do not give a shit. That means dick to me. Why? Again, family should look out for each other. A family is a group of people that love each other. A family is a unit of people that should come together and make sure that the people you love around you are the safest they could be at all times. Because we all know that a stranger is capable to come in and do anything to you. Because a stranger doesn't know you. A stranger is willing to hurt you. But in a family, that's not supposed to happen. Well, hey, guess what? One of our family members hurt me and hurt me bad. And what you're telling me is you don't care enough to cut them out. Well, guess what? Grow some balls. Grow some, grow some tits. 
Grow whatever it is that you need to fucking grow and cut that piece of shit out of your life. Because again, if not, I have no problem never seeing my family ever again if that's who they're choosing. Because again, you're choosing a sexual predator, a child molester over me. And that's fine. It's crazy that my friends, who friends are people that you pick. Oh, I want to hang out with you. Oh, I want to hang out with you. Oh, I want to hang out with you. Oh, we're gelling. Cool. We're friends. Perfect. The friends that I have told have been nothing but compassionate. Have been nothing but supportive. I couldn't even get that shit from my fucking mom and my sister. That's fucked up. I think I've said everything that I want to say. Again, my cousin Fernando Blanco. Hey, fuck you, you child molesting predator. Fuck you. I hope you rot in fucking hell if there's a hell. I don't think there is, but fuck you. Again, I'm going to tag him in the post. I'm going to put his Instagram in the, um, I'll put his name and his Instagram in the description. And if you know anybody that has been affected by sexual assault, by sexual abuse, by anything like that, I'm going to put the number of a hotline you can, you can call, pass it along to them. You know, if, if you know somebody or you may think you have a sneaky suspicion Please tell them to, to watch this episode because I want, I want to try to empower other people who have been affected by sexual assault and give them the courage to come out and talk about it. Because this shit, this shit can't be as, 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 as normal as, as it is. It's fucking gross. It's fucking gross. And if you're watching this right now and you have been affected and you don't know how to start, please, please feel free to talk to me. Maybe I can point you, I know, I know a couple people who are therapists and I can reach out to them and ask them for different resources. And maybe we can even find the resources in your town, in your county, in your state, whatever you need. If I can be helpful to other victims, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. (sighs) Yeah, I think I'm done. Um, next week's going to be interesting. Hey, remember when I told you my cousin sexually abused me? Hey, let's get back to dick jokes. Yeah. Um, see you next week.